Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. This is part two to creating a custom matchmaking feature for a multiplayer game in Unity. If you haven't seen part one, then go back and watch that. As well, these lessons build off of our tutorial series on the basics of the Photon plugin. So if you haven't gone through that tutorial series, then make sure that you do so. Now let's get to it. Now before we begin, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates when we publish new videos. Alright, so here we have our same Unity project open, and if you followed along with part one, then you should have already created all the UI elements that we'll need for this video. In part one, we created this new Canvas game object, which we've called Canvas Custom Matchmaking, and as a child to this object, we have an object called Lobby and an object called Room. Now in part one, we used mostly just the lobby game object. And so in this video, we're going to be using the room game object. And when a player enters a room, we will then display the names of all the players that are in that room. And displaying the names of the players in a room is actually very similar to displaying the names of rooms in a lobby. And so this video is going to have very similar code to what we did in part one. So to get started, we're actually going to make a new Photon Room script, and we're going to do this by duplicating our previously created Photon Room script. So I'm going to go to our Scripts Photon folder, and I'm going to find our Photon Room script, and I'm going to select it and then hit Control D to duplicate it. Once we've duplicated it, we can then rename it to be something like Photon Room Custom Match. I'm then going to copy the name of the script and then open the script in Visual Studios. Once we've opened the script in Visual Studios, we then need to change the name of the class to match the name of the script. And we're going to change the singleton so that it is of the same data type as our class. We'll also need to scroll down to our awake function and change these data types to rather than being photon room to being photon room custom match. So here, 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 and here. That'll make it so we're no longer receiving any errors in this script. All right, the next thing that we need to do is clean up the script so that it'll work better for our custom matchmaking feature. And there's really only a few things that we need to change. The first thing is found in our on joined room function, which is right here. And down at the bottom of this function, we have this else statement where we are calling the start game function. Now I want to comment out this else statement and the reason why is because this is what's causing us to currently load into the multiplayer scene whenever we join a room. But we want to postpone that transition and allow the players to see all the players that are currently in the room and then have the master client be able to click a button that will then load all those players into the scene. The next thing that we need to do is scroll down to our start game function and make this function public. That way we compare it to a button that the master client will then be able to click. Once we have that, we can then scroll up to the top where we can add in some new variables. The first variable will be a public game object, and this will be for our lobby game object. The next one will be a public game object, and this will be for our room game object. And the next one will be a public transform, and this one will be for our players panel. This will be where we display all the players that are currently in the room. And our next one will be a public game object. And this will be for our player listing prefab. And finally, we're going to have a public game object. And this will be for our start button. Once we have these variables, we can then scroll back down to our on join room function. And now we're going to start coding our custom matchmaking feature. So right here, after my debug statement, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to disable our lobby game object. So I'm going to type lobby go dot set active, and I'm going to set it to false. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to activate or enable our room game object. So room go dot set active, and I'm going to pass in true. We then want to enable the start button if we are the master client. And so I'm going to use an if statement. I'm going to check if photon network dot is master client 
is true, and if that's true, then we're going to say start button dot set active, and we're going to pass in true. The next thing that we need to do is we need to clear out any old player listings that are a part of our players panel. And so to do this, we're going to use a new function. I'm going to call it clear player listings. And after we clear out the player listings, we then want to create a new player listing for every player within our player list. And so to do this, I'm going to create a new function. This is going to be our list players function. Now we can go ahead and create these functions. So I'm going to copy the clear player listing function name. I'm going to scroll down to after our on join room function. And I'm going to create this new function. So void, I'm going to paste the name and then parentheses curly braces. Now, like in our last video, I tried using a while loop to remove all the old player listings, but for some reason, I kept getting stuck in an infinite loop. And so I decided to go with just a simple for loop. But this for loop is going to be a little bit different because we're going to start at the end and work backwards. And so I'm going to type for int i equals, and then we're going to use our players panel dot child count, and then we're going to say minus one, and then we're going to check to see if i is greater than or equal to zero, and then we're going to say i minus minus. Inside this for loop, we're just going to destroy the players panel dot get child, and we're going to pass in i, and then we're going to get the game object. This will start at the last child of the player's panel and remove that child, and then it'll work its way to the first child, removing each child along the way. Once we have this function, we can then go ahead and create our list players function. So I'm going to type void, paste in the function name, parentheses, and curly braces. Inside this function, we first want to check to see if we are in a room. And so I'm going to type photon network dot in room. If we are inside a room, then we want to traverse through our player list using a for each loop. And so I'm going to type for each, and then it's going to be player, and we're going to call it player with a lowercase p, in, and then we're going to use photon network dot player list. Inside this for loop, we are going to create a new player listing for each player. And so I'm going to create a new game object. I'm going to call it temp listing. And we're going to set it equal to instantiate, pass in the player listing prefab. And then as a parent, we are going to pass in the players panel. The next thing I'm going to do is get the text object that will be a child to our player listings prefab. And so I'm going to type text, which is not recognized, and I'm going to select text, hold alt, press enter, I'm going to select using unityengine.ui, and then going to call this temp text. I'm going to set it equal to temp listing, and we then want to get the transform, and then we want to get the first child, so get child, pass in a zero. We then want to get component and we want to pass in text, parentheses, semicolon. Once we get the text object, we can then update the text value with the name of this player. And so I'm going to say temp text dot text equals player dot nickname. Once we have this function created, we then want to call these two functions in a few other places within our script. The first place is in our onPlayerEnterRoom function, and we'll add it in right here after this debug statement. And so I'm going to type clear player listings, parentheses, semicolon, and then list players, parentheses, semicolon. And it's important that we clear the old listings before we create new listings, because if we don't clear them and we just create new listings, then we're gonna end up with duplicate names. And if we list the players before we clear them, then we're going to list them and then immediately delete them. And so it's important that we do it in this order. 
I'm then going to copy these two functions. I'm going to scroll down to our on player left room function, which is down at the bottom, and I'm going to paste them in there as well. Now there's one more thing that we need to do. We need to find where we are setting the nickname variable of our photon network. And for me, it's right here, which is in the on join room function. Now what we need to do is we need to move this line of code to somewhere else that will be executed earlier in our game. And the reason why is because anytime you update the nickname variable, it will then be synchronized across the network. And it actually takes time for this value to be synchronized across the network. And so for this example, since we are trying to set this value in the same frame that we're also trying to display the player's names, what happens is for the other clients, they haven't received that name yet. And so for them, it will just show blank on the player listing. And so I'm actually going to cut this line of code and I'm going to go over to our Photon Lobby custom match script. And in our on connected to master function, I'm going to paste that line of code in there. But you'll notice that we receive an error because my number in room is not recognized. It's not a part of the script. And so I'm actually going to change what we set nickname to, to just be quotes player space close quotes plus, and then I'm going to randomize a number. So random dot range. I'm going to pass in zero through, let's say 1000. Now that should be everything that we need to do. So let's go ahead and save all of our scripts and we'll go back to unity. Once back inside Unity, we need to create a new room controller game object, and I'm actually going to create our new one from our old one. So I'm going to rename our old one to AMM room controller, and then I'm going to select it. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm also going to disable our old one so that we don't run these scripts. I'm then going to rename this new one to be CMM room controller and get rid of this number as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove our photon room script and I'm going to add our new photon room custom match script. We then need to set our new variables. And so for our lobby game object, I'm going to expand our canvas custom matchmaking object. I'm going to grab the lobby game object and drag it in there. For our room game object, I'm going to grab the room and drag it in there. For our players panel, I'm going to expand our room and grab the players object drag it in there. For our player listings prefab, we still have to create that object and it's actually going to be a lot like our room listing from the previous video. And so I'm going to go to our prefabs folder and find our room listing. I'm then going to drag it onto our players panel, which is right here. I'm going to also enable our room object so that we can see what's going on. And what we need to do is we first need to rename our room listing to be something like player listing. We can then expand it and we're going to remove our size text object and then we can change the text in our name text object so that it says something like player name. We're also going to want to remove the room button component from our player listing object. So I'm going to remove that and we can also remove the button component because this isn't going to be a button. It's just going to display the player's name. Once we've done that, we can then make this a prefab by dragging it into our prefabs folder. And once we've made it a prefab, we can then go ahead and remove it from our hierarchy. I'm then going to go back to our CMM room controller, and I'm going to select our player listing and drag it into our player listings prefab variable. And then for our start button, we can grab the start button from our rooms game object and drag it in there. The last thing that we need to do is we need to go to our start game button and we need to scroll down and add in our on click event. So I'm going to grab our room controller and drag it in here. I'm then going to go to photon room custom match and I'm going to find our start game function. We then also need to disable our room game object and then we can build our project and see if it works. Once our project is finished building, we can hit play in the standalone and play in the editor. In the standalone, I'm going to set a room name, so something like my room. And then for the room size, I'm going to set something like 10, and then I'm going to hit create room. 
And here you can see that it did not load us into the multiplayer scene, but instead it disabled the lobby game object and enabled the room game object. We can also see that we have one player listing, which says player 24, which must be the nickname, and this must be our player listing. And we can also see that it has enabled the start game button, and that's because we are the master client. Now I'm going to go back to the editor, and I'm going to click find rooms, and there you can see we're now in the room and we have the different player listings. This player 24 is the same as it was for the standalone, and this new player 819 is the player for the editor. If I go back to the standalone, you can see it's the same, player 24 and player 819. Let's go ahead and create one more standalone. I'm going to hit play. And here you can see that it'll update for all the players. So when I click my room, it loaded me in as player 90, and you can see that all of them have a player 90. Now the last thing that we need to test is the start game button. So if I go to the master client and I click start game, you can see that it has loaded us in to the scene. And I have a red capsule, as I did in the last video, and two green capsules. All right, that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to create a custom matchmaking feature for a multiplayer game in Unity. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you found it to be helpful. If you have any questions, make sure that you leave them in the comments below. Also, make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date on all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.